Hello friends and thank you as always for visiting the Legend Sports Universe YouTube channel, Legend Sports Universe, where legends play forever. A happy Easter in real life to everyone as we get to the middle game of the Franchise Stars Baseball League Game of the Week, the American League Series here between the Detroit Tigers and the Boston Red Sox. Justin Verlander, the hot shot rookie for the Tigers who are improved this season. Battle Cy Young here from Fenway Park. We should have a terrific matchup on an overcast day here in Boston. Tigers took the opener of the series, four RBIs from Alan Trammell. In game one, Cy Young will try to get the Red Sox back on the winning track. Young 2-2, two and two, a 2.83 ERA through his first five starts of this campaign as the Red Sox are once again battling the Yankees atop the American League East. Nathaniel Lentz and Bernard Strong have joined us here in the chat. How are you, gentlemen? I hope you have had a wonderful day. Appreciate you checking in here. Cy Young will face Placido Polanco to open things off for the Tigers. Polanco batting 247. Breaking ball from Young. Misses down and in. First pitch, 135. Young winds that arm up and delivers. High fastball to Polanco, misses. He's behind 2-0. Oh. Fastball there, swung on and missed. Fastball away, Polanco fans at it. A pretty weak swing at an outside pitch. Good fastball there at the knees, so Young working all around the box here to Polanco to open things off. Well, glad to hear that, Nathaniel. I did as well. Breaking ball there. Polanco lines it down the right field line. That's going to get inside the line. That's a fair ball. It hops into the stands over the low wall down the right field line. It's a leadoff ground rule double for Placido Polanco as the Tigers get things started well here in the top of the first at Fenway. Here's Alan Trammell. The game will not let me get Alan Trammell's number back to number three. There's nobody else on the Tigers franchise who's wearing the number or anything, but for some reason it is blocking me from assigning him his actual uniform number. So trust me, I am aware of that, and it's a little bit irritating, <laughs> especially because Trammell was one of my favorite players. But regardless, Trammell is still batting 265, regardless of the uniform number issue. And he hits this one well to the left. Williams is going to play this one off the monster. And it bounces over his head. Williams is able to grab it. Polanco scores. Trammell doubles off the monster and two batters in. The Detroit Tigers take a 1-0 lead. So Trammell had a double, a homer, and four RBIs in the opener of this series. Continues to swing a hot bat here in Boston. In steps Al Kaline. Kaline batting 296. So a rough start here for Cy Young. Somewhere, wherever he may be, our good friend MB is smiling. Young, a homer, 10 RBIs. K-line a whole ten on. That's not good. As Bernard notes it, the physics on that ball were proper. Yeah, they, they get that stuff right. Again, the stuff that the show gets wrong is like stupid, silly stuff. You know, the actual the actual game is is, is terrific. Stuff like the between innings uniform glitch and or the thing with Trammell's uniform number. Like that stuff is kind of silly, kind of stuff, but. Very, very few complaints about the game itself. One and two to count here as Young works the K-line. The breaking ball misses away. K-line lays off. Young rocks and fires. Fastball swung on and missed. Down goes K-line for the first out. Young looks to minimize the damage here in the first. And up in the zone a little bit. K-Line swung just a touch underneath it. So there's your first out. Here's Norm Cash. 
Tigers first baseman batting 261 so far this season. Fastball, that's a high strike. Young gets the call, though. Three homers, 10 RBIs so far for Cash. Young comes to the very deliberate set. Basic lands at the runner and delivers. Breaking ball there. Swung on and missed. The count goes to 0-2. Ramel on second, one out, here in the top of the first in Boston. Tigers have already claimed a 1-0 lead. One two offering from Young. Curve ball there, misses inside. It's two and two. Another off-speed pitch away from Young. Comes to the set once more. And delivers. Up and in. Cash lays off. Jim Northrup waits in the on-deck circle for Detroit. And sets and delivers. High fly ball to the right. That'll be playable. Though. Carries a bit. Betts drifts along with it. Makes the play. Trammell won't test it. Betts with a fine arm. You certainly don't want a chance to run there at third. Your Tigers line up, Polanco, Trammell, and K-Line, Cash, Northrup, and Granderson, Kettleton, McAuliffe, and Willie Horton. Detroit's offense hasn't been great yet this season, but their pitching has been very strong to this point. Red Sox have kind of had the reverse problem. The Red Sox actually have not pitched very well so far this year outside of Pedro Martinez and Cy Young. ERA up over, a little bit over four. Northrop batting 268, two homers, 11 RBIs. Red Sox, of course, have plenty of potency in this lineup. Fastball there to Northrop. This is up and away. Looks in again. Trammell takes his lead off second. Breaking ball down in the dirt. Knocked down. Trammell got a good read on that one, though, and Trammell takes third. That's going to be a wild pitch on Cy Young. So that one was down in the dirt, even though I believe Rick Farrell was behind the plate today. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's Farrell. Kept it in front of him. Trammell read it well anyway. Young comes inside, ties Northrop up. It's two and two. And Cy Young looking to minimize the damage with just the one run in for Detroit. High fastball punches him out. Good location up and in from Young. Northrop thought it was a ball. He's mistaken. But Alan Trammell gets the Tigers on the board first here with an RBI double off the monster. We'll head to the bottom of the first at Fenway. Tigers nothing. Red Sox coming up. Again, I mentioned this on the last broadcast. I'm changing, even though this is a day game, but I'm changing doing my game of the week broadcasts to Saturday games on the schedule instead of Sunday games so I can have the possibility of night games which really don't happen on Sundays. So here's the rookie Verlander, 1-1, one one, a 3.03 earned run average, a 0 0.98 whip. Tigers very excited about Verlander and what he could mean to this franchise. Again, we mentioned their pitching has been significantly improved this year. Verlander and fellow rookie Schoolboy Rowe have both been terrific. Kobe Ellsbury has not been terrific, but he gets the start here for the Red Sox today. Ellsbury batting 192. We may see some changes for the Red Sox. If that continues. As Bernie says that first inning could have been worse. Yeah, absolutely. You give up two base runners right off the bat. Could have certainly done worse than a run. As Dwayne March checks in. How are you, Dwayne? Hope you have had a good day, sir. And happy Easter to anyone who's celebrating. 
Verlander behind Ellsbury 3 and 0. Oh, that is not where he wants to be. Fastball misses down low. So Verlander, who's had impeccable control to his first five FSBL starts, misses down low, puts Ellsbury on base. And here is Reggie Smith. Smith batting 267. They run the pitch out. Ellsbury goes strong throw down to second, and he got him. Beautiful throw from Mickey Tendleton. They guessed right. Ellsbury going on the first pitch. And they gun Ellsbury down. So the base runner is quickly erased. 1-0 the count. Change up there to Smith. Misses outside. Smith, a 9.06 career OPS in two seasons plus a month of FSBL action. Fastball in there for a called strike. It's 2-1. and one. Some point tomorrow, I will probably have the next will be the Florida Marlins visiting the Atlanta Braves. Sandy Alcantara and Greg Maddox will be the pitching matchup in that one as Ted Williams waits on deck here for Boston. 3-1 offering from Verlander. Swung on and missed. The count goes full. Verlander rocks and fires again. Ties Smith up. Popped up there. Polanco underneath it. Puts it away for the second out. Your Red Sox lineup. Ellsbury, Smith, and Williams. Betts, Harris, and Collins. Door. Doby Moore gets the start at shortstop. The rookie fighting John Valentin for playing time and starting to win that battle. And Jason Baratek is behind the plate for the Red Sox today. I apologize thought Rick Farrell was getting the start. Third ball misses away. Williams batting 323, six homers, 13 runs batted in. A very strong start for Williams. Red Sox, 40 home runs, second in the nat second in the American League. Fastball there at the knees. One and one the count. Williams slugging 624 here in the early going. Verlander delivers. Fastball comes inside. It's 2-1. and one. Fastball up high. Can't get William to chase. Mookie Betts waits on deck, and Betts having a bit of an odd start to the season. We'll get to that when he steps into the box. Fastball misses down low for ball four. So Verlander had only walked three batters in his first five starts. He's walked two here in the first inning today. Now here's Mookie Betts. Betts is batting 213. Does have eight home runs, though. Betts has been terrific for the Red Sox over the first two seasons. He spent much of that time batting in the two-hole. They have moved him into the cleanup slot this season, but that may change. Given the struggles he's had, although if he keeps doing that, maybe I'll leave him there. Mookie Betts reached Justin Verlander and says, hey, maybe I can get used to this cleanup spot. Two-run shot from Mookie Betts, and the Red Sox have taken a 2-1 lead here in the first. Ninth home run of the season for Mookie Betts here in the opening month. Drives that one out over the monster. That pitch was up in the zone, and Betts jumped all over it. Hooking, but well fair. So now Verlander will try to shake that one off here against Joe Harris. Harris batting 237 for Boston. Three homers, eight runs batted in so far this season. Breaking ball there, misses away, it's one and one. And Harris hits this one well. Going back, Horton's looking up. 
And it's out of here. Home run, Joe Harris. Fourth home run of the year for Harris. He and Betts go back to back. And the Red Sox now lead it 3-1 to one here in the first as Justin Verlander struggling on his first visit to Fenway. Belt high, straight ball. That's not going to get it done in the big leagues, folks. So back-to-back -back jacks for the Sox. Here's Jimmy Collins. Collins batting 284. Four homers, seven RBIs. And we mentioned in the top half of this inning, all the Tigers were still up to you. Red Sox certainly have potency in their lineup. Second in the American League in homers entering this game. As Dwayne March notes, the power turned on at Fenway today. Absolutely. Good start there for the Sox. After Young gave up the RBI double to Trammell in the top half. Erlander feeling squeezed there on that outside corner. Probably right. I can adjust Berlander's face. I can make that model a bit better than it is right now. Not terrible, but I can make it better. Fastball there off the plate. Collins styles it off. One two offering from Verlander. Fastball down low. Collins lays off. A curveball there is outside as well as Bobby Doerr, who's off to a fine start this year, waits in the on deck circle. 3-2 pitch coming from Verlander. This is pitch 27 of this first inning. Ground ball down to third, picked nicely by Polanco, throws over to first. And the side is retired. But the Red Sox get back-to-back -back jacks, a two-run shot from Mookie Betts and a solo shot from Joe Harris. We head to the top of the second at Fenway. Red Sox three, Tigers one. Appreciate you all joining me here on this late Easter Sunday broadcast. If you have not subscribed as of yet, I hope you will kindly consider doing so. And if you have not hit that like button yet, kindly do so as well, because it tells YouTube that somebody out there likes you. Who doesn't want that? Here's Curtis Granderson. Granderson batting 242. Takes the first pitch ball. So now Young. Back out in front. Granderson drives this one deep to right field. That's a one hopper over the short wall out there in right. That's the second ground rule double in two innings for the Tigers. Got that one towards the line, hooking away from Betts. And, of course, that wall out there and right at Fenway is about three feet tall. So Granderson is on second. And, honestly, that might have actually saved the Red Sox a base because as well as Granderson runs, there was a taller wall out there. Granderson might be on third right now. Here's Mickey Tettleton, 274, five homers, 11 RBIs. Here as we get ready to close out the month of April. That's ball from Young, misses down low. So he's expecting a pitcher's duel in this one, but we're showing some signs that that might not end up being the case. Of course, both pitchers could right their ship, but neither pitcher seeming to have their best stuff at this moment. 1-1 one, one count as Young works to Kettleton, breaking ball, Kettleton fouls it off. Break ball there, get some. Pettleton goes fishing, screw ball away. Third strikeout for Young. He's retired three of the four men he's retired so far via the strikeout. Pettleton grabs a seat, and there's one away. Here's Dick McAuliffe. McAuliffe, a very rough opening month of the season, batting 162. Lines this one out, though, into center field. That's going to be a base hit. Granderson will come home and score easily. 
It's an RBI single for Dick McAuliffe, and the Tigers have cut the deficit to a run. It's now 3-2, Boston. Hanging breaking ball there from Young. Even though it was on the outside part of the plate, McAuliffe was able to go get it and line it in the center. Here's Willie Horton. Horton has also struggled out of the gate for Detroit. 195 so far. Throw over to first. McAuliffe dives back in safe. And delivers. Fastball. That looks like a good pitch, but he doesn't get the call. Horton, four homers, seven RBIs to this point. Comes to the set. Here, Young looking in. Breaking ball, Horton smashes it to Moore. Right at him, knocks it down, gets at the door, still gets it on the first. So even though Moore wasn't able to handle it cleanly, they still turn the 6-4-3. But not before Dick McAuliffe hits an RBI single to get the Tigers back within one. We head to the bottom of the second at Fenway, 3-2 Red Sox. Again, the Tigers took game one of this series yesterday. 6-3, led by four RBIs from Alan Trammell, who also has an RBI today. Here's Bobby Doerr, and Doerr has been terrific out of the gate. 321, three homers, 14 runs batted in here in April. Justin Verlander needed 27 pitches to get through the first. He'll look for a more economical second inning here, but he misses with the fastball down low to start things off the door. Ender looks in, fastball up high, swung on and missed. Nice slider there from Verlander, so he's ahead of door one and two. Edelton sets up inside, Verlander delivers, fastball misses. One's down in the dirt. Count goes full. Rookie Dobie Moore waits on deck. 3-2 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Door is struck out for the first out here of inning number two. First strikeout for Verlander. Batting eight. The shortstop. Number 22. So that'll bring up Dobie Moore. Moore, again, as we mentioned, a rookie taken in last year's rookie draft. He's fighting to try to supplant John Valentin. As the starting shortstop here in Boston, Valentin only batting in the 230s right now. Moore batting 294. Pair of homers, five RBIs. Stoby Moore in real life, a Negro League star. Don't look him up on Saber or the Seam Heads baseball database to learn a little bit more about Moore. One and one the count here as Verlander works to more. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. So Verlander didn't go to that slider much in the first. He's gone to it a bit more here in the second, and it's been effective for him. 1-2 offering. Moore hits this one out into the gap. That's going to be extra bases. A one hopper to the wall. Moore's around first. He'll head into second. Granderson gets it in. To the cutoff man, but it's a one-out double for Dolby Moore, his fifth double of the season. And Moore continues to make a case that he should start getting the bulk of the time at short. John Valentin has not been bad for the Red Sox over the first two years by any means. Here's Jason Baratek. Baratek fouls it off. Tech batting 219, a homer and 10 RBIs out of the gate here in year three of the FSBL. So one pitch from Verlander, back to the mound. Verlander knocks it down. He'll have time to get Barrett. Moore holds it second, and there's two away. The batter, 
number two. Verlander does a little landscaping on the mound. So here's Ellsbury. Ellsbury walked in the first and then was thrown out trying to steal. Ellsbury still getting some time against right-handed pitching, but he's still hitting below 200, and you might see a shift where Reggie Smith starts playing center against everybody. Red Sox also now have Dwight Evans up with the big club on the bench, so you could see a situation there where perhaps Evans gets some DH at bats. Smith plays center, and Ellsbury grabs a seat on the bench. 2-0 the count as Verlander works to Ellsbury here. Certainly does not want to put him on again. That one misses inside. It's 3-0. The Red Sox have plenty of depth in the outfield. in there for a called strike. That's going to mean that Ellsbury just doesn't have a heck of a lot. They're not, they don't have to have too long a leash with Ellsbury because they got plenty of other guys out there who can do a job. But Ellsbury lines this one into the gap in left center. That's going to be an RBI double for Jacoby Ellsbury. Perhaps hearing the footsteps of someone replacing him out there. Comes through here. It's the fifth double of the season for Ellsbury. The Red Sox have another run on the board. This start not going the way Justin Verlander hoped. It's 4-2 Boston. Good piece of hitting there from Ellsbury. So now here's Reggie Smith. Up next for the Red Sox, the designated hitter, Reggie Smith. Fastball in for a called strike. Lander from the set. Fastball swung on a miss. It's 0 and 2. Verlander takes a peek at Ellsbury at second. 0 2 breaking ball, and Smith just gets a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne notes, Legends does it again, talks bad about a batter, and then he does well. Yeah, I guess I'm the reverse of the kiss of death, I guess. I wish that worked that I could talk about how bad my Mets suck, and then my Mets wouldn't have gotten swept by the Brewers in real life. What an abysmal series that was. On the outside corner, strike three. Good pitch there from Verlander. He locks Smith up. There's the uniform glitch we know and hate so well. Jacoby Ellsbury is a Red Sox and drove in a run for the Sox. Lines this double here in the left center, and the Red Sox tack on. Get their lead back up to two. We'll head to the top of the third at Fenway. It's 4-2. Top over the Tigers. Here's Placido Polanco. Polanco doubled and scored his first time up. On the inside corner, swung on and missed there by Polanco for strike one as our good friend Steve Tate joins us. How are you, Steve? Good to see you, sir. Hope all is well with you. Polanco fouls it off. It's 0-2. A very overcast afternoon here at Fenway, but no rain in the forecast. Polanco fouls it off. Again, this is going to be the show 22. I'm hoping that by 20, the, the newest version, I wonder if they added rain delays back in the game. That used to be part of the game, and then they took them out for some stupid reason. Polanco goes the other way again. His first time, he put it right on the chalk, and it bounced into the seats for a ground rule double. This one stays more fair. He'll settle for a single here, but the Tigers will try to get themselves... At least another run in this inning. Again, both teams, neither pitcher has looked particularly sharp thus far. Here's Trammell. Trammell, again, four RBIs yesterday and RBI today as well. 
this bat starts to heat up for the Tigers. Four of the five teams in this America in that American League Central are at 500 or above at this point. It's the Chicago White Sox currently leading the division. Trammell fouls this one off. And four for five with a homer and four ribbies yesterday. And man, just because I like Trammell so much, that the uniform number thing is really, really annoying. Loops this one in the center. Coming on is Ellsbury. He'll get there. Puts it away for out number one. Because MLB The Show has had this glitch where if a team has retired numbers, it would kind of block guys, but you could work around it. Like, you'd have to, like, send a guy down in the minors, get him wearing his right number, and then bring him back up to the majors, and then it would kind of reset. Um, like, I've had to do that with, like, William McCovey of the Giants, um, and a couple of other guys. Um, like I was able, Robin Yount, I was able to fix it with Robin Yount. But for some reason, I can't get Trammell to wear three. You know, not that Alan Trammell is going to be sent down to the minors a lot or anything like that, but I don't want to go burning Alan Trammell's, you know, options, um, which are a thing in this game. You know, players have player options, and then if you send them down too many times, they have to clear waivers and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want to create a potential roster problem down the line. You know, if Trammell ever gets injured and gets put in the minors for a little bit or whatever, like, I don't want to go messing with Alan Trammell's roster stuff. So I did it once, and it didn't reset. So for now, at least, I just have to deal with Trammell being wearing number nine instead of number three, but it's still annoying. Or misses inside, down and into K line. Two and two the count. He delivers. K line puts it back up the box. Dolby Moore dives, knocks it down. Only play, it's a shot at first, but K line beats it out. So Moore probably saved a first and third situation there. A nice, rangy play there from the rookie shortstop. But he's not able to turn it into any outs. And now the Tigers have first and second. <laughs> Bernard notes that Ellsbury is available for trade in Field of Dreams if anyone is interested. Here's Norm Cash. Cash is 0 for 1. Breaking ball from Young at the knees. from the set. That's ball misses down low. It's one and one. One misses down and in. I'm trying to remember. I don't have my Nyard Bames guy in front of me. If Young actually threw a screwball or if that's being used to replace a spitball. Curveball there misses away. It's three and one. <laughs> Steve notes who isn't available for trade. That is also true. I may just open up the trade floodgates with my team, which I admittedly have not paid any attention to this season. I may just kind of give myself a reboot heading into the trade deadline. There's a couple guys who I wouldn't give up, but other than that, I may just kind of say the doors are open. Give me your best offer and. Uh, but I also don't want to, like, you know, uh, overly influence the remainder of the season. Like, of a season that I haven't paid much attention to, because I've been involved in other things. I don't want to then come in there and make a bunch of trades at the deadline and, like, screw anybody or anything like that. So we'll see. Base is loaded here after the walk, and the Tigers have an opportunity. Here's Jim Northrup, who struck out his first time up. Fastball is in for a called strike. Potentially a very big at bat in this game. Even though it's only the top of the third. 
Both Young and Verlander struggling. That one misses away. It's one and one. Young delivers. Fastball misses down low. It's two and one. This isn't even a case of the pitchers being squeezed. They are just, neither one of them is really hitting their spots to this point. Two one offering to Northrop with the bases juiced. Fastball swung on and missed. That's the pitch that he struck him out on his first time off. So now the count is two and two. The Boston faithful trying to get Cy Young through this. High fastball he doesn't chase. No room at the end. Bases loaded. Three and two. The count to Jim Northrup. We'll see what Young tries to pull out of his bag of tricks here. Fastball Northrup skies at the center. That should get a run home. Ellsbury is there. Puts it away. The runner tags. Ellsbury hits the cutoff man. It's a sacrifice fly for Jim Northrup, and the Tigers have once again gotten within a run as Polanco comes in to score. Smart move by Ellsbury, not getting over-aggressive on the throw. Not blessed with the great arm. He wasn't really going to have any play at the plate. Here's Curtis Granderson. Granderson one for one. He doubled and scored. First pitch fastball, Granderson fouls it off. 25 pitches this inning for Cy Young. Similar to the 27 pitch first inning that Justin Verlander had. Third ball swung on and missed. It's 0 and 2. There's the offering. Swung on and missed. Young fans Granderson with a low fastball and gets through it without any further damage. So we head to the bottom of the third at Fenway. Looking like we might be in for a long one here. <laughs> of course, because I started the broadcast late. That's how it always goes. Ted Williams steps in, bottom of the third. He walked his first time up. It is 4-3 Boston. I was doing this game in the middle of the day. It would be a, you know, four hitter. And we'd get through it in, you know, 50 minutes or so. Do a late night broadcast and we'll see how long it can possibly take. Williams hits that one on the screws, but right to Trammell. Who throws him out. There's one away. The batter, number 50. So hit hard by Ted Williams, but sometimes it finds the glove. Here's Mookie Betts, who found the seats his first time up with a two-run shot. Good slider there from Verlander. Betts flails at that one. That slider misses down low. Slider misses down low. It's two and one. Yeah, then I just checked it. The Nyer James guide says that Young threw a spitball and it was occasional. Um, so that's there's no mention of him throwing a screwball. So that's probably the splitter actually better represents a spitball than a screwball does. So I should probably change that. Screwball is a somewhat unique pitch. Count is full here as Verlander works the bets. Fastball rides inside for ball four, so it's a one-out base runner. That is the third walk issued by Verlander, who had only walked three batters in his first five starts of the season. Here's Joe Harris. Harris homered back-to-back -back with bets in the first. Runner goes. Good strong throw from Tettleton. Tettleton is on his game. He gunned down 
Ellsbury earlier, and he throws out Mookie Betts here. Another throw right on the dime from Mickey Pendleton. Two down, one and oh, to Harris, who tattoos this ball out deep to left center. Off the top of the monster, fielded nicely by Granderson. Harris goes for second, and he's out at second. Beautifully played by Curtis Granderson. So the Red Sox get a walk erased and a stretch into a double off the monster erased. And somehow... <laughs> Verlander has his first scoreless inning of the game. It's 4-3 as we head to the fourth. Here's Mickey Tettleton. Tettleton 0 for 1, but he has thrown out a pair of base runners. That's ball swung on and missed down low. This game is not lacking for activity. Tapper Young off the mound. Throws the first, gets Tettleton for out number one. It is a steel gray sky here in Boston. In steps Dick McAuliffe. RBI single his first time up as he tries to get his season turned around. What has been a terrible start for him. Fastball ball off the plate. It's 1-0. So nice finding the workaround to be able to actually call guys who were named Dick Dick in the game instead of just having to use their first initial. One of the dumber things that I've encountered in my roster development uh, work over the years. Two and one the count. Here is Young works to McCall. There's a shot, pulled foul. Off the netting down the right field line. Two offering from Young. All the fouls, another one off. Young rocks that arm once more. And all the tops this one up. Collins is underneath it. Step onto the grass out and left, puts it away for the second out. The left field. So Young, hoping for his first clean inning of the game, will try to get it done against Willie Horton. Horton's been a good player for the Tigers over the first two years here of the FSBL, but he is struggling so far here in year three, even though the Tigers have improved. Fastball off the outside corner, it's 1-0. We'll take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard the next time it passes through. Young squeeze there. That looks like a good pitch on the outside corner, but it's called the ball. Duo offering curveball misses. It's 3-0. Mariners and Yankees will play later in the Bronx. Blue Jays are up 2-0 on the Rays in Tampa in the fourth inning of that one. Oh, it's not giving me descriptions of the action right now. That stinks. Walk there to Horton. Two out walk. Now bring up Placido Polanco. Twins and Astros are tied at three in the fourth in Houston. Johnny Edwards has an RBI there. Royals over the Rangers. one nothing in the fourth from Kansas City. Willie Aikens is driven in the long run for the Royals. Orioles and Indians will play later tonight. Ned Garver gets the start for the Orioles. Corey Kluber starts for the Tribe. Phillies and A's go at it in Oakland later on. Robin Roberts gets the start for the Phillies. Eddie Plank will go for Oakland. The Angels all over these struggling Expos. Shot down, pass first. Foul. And the Expos have made been a surprise team. They've made the playoffs each of the first two years of the FSBL, but the Expos now find themselves in the cellar of the National League East. Chopper up the middle, ranging over, Moore flips it to door. And the force is done. The side is retired, and it's a scoreless inning. 
that Cy Young desperately needed will head to the bottom of the fourth in Boston. 4-3 Red Sox, Collins, Dorr, and Moore do up for Boston. Here's Jimmy Collins. Collins is 0 for 1. Comes over the Pirates. Pirates still the best team in the National League at this point. They trail in Chicago against Claude Passeau. J.D. Martinez has hit his eighth homer of the year for the Diamondbacks, who are up 3-0 on the White Sox. Verlander with the 1-0 pitch here to Collins. Curveball misses down in the dirt. Verlander rocks and fires. 2-0 pitch. In there for a called strike. Two one. That one's Yanks foul. So Verlander has battled back to two and two. After starting off 2-0. There's a shot into center field. Right center. That's going to split the gap and go to the wall. Granderson gets to it quickly. But it's going to be a leadoff double. And the Red Sox are threatening again. Jimmy Collins is sixth double of the season. They haven't shown us any bullpen action yet for Detroit. But it's clear that the rookie Verlander does not have his best stuff here in this one. Here's Bobby Doerr. Doerr is 0 for 1. Fastball on the outside corner. Doerr struck out his first time up. There's a shot the other way. That's going to be a base hit. Hit hard, but the run's going to try to score. K-Lines throw a little bit to the first base side. Not a bad throw by any stretch, but not enough to get the run home, or get the run at the plate, I should say. It's an RBI single for Bobby Doerr, who continues his strong early season. And the Red Sox extend their lead back to two. It's 5-3 Boston. Here's Dobie Moore. Moore out towards right center. That's going to go back. One hopper off the wall. K-line retrieves it. Runner held up. And now it's going to hold the third. Oh, I'm happy to see that that runner held the third, actually, because if you can fo if you follow the FSBL, you know that sometimes the base running going for the plate can be over-aggressive. So I'm glad to see that that runner held there, but Dolby Moore, his second double of the game. And John Valentin maybe finding himself forced into a reserve role. Second and third, nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Fastball misses. Verlander snaps at the ball in disgust. He thought he had a strike there, but he also knows he has not pitched well to this point. Red Sox have potential to blow this one open here. Fastball misses away. It's 2-0. Reigning National League Most Valuable Player, Willie Mays, doing it again in the early going this year, leads the National League in home runs with 12. Erlander misses inside. It's 3-0. There's Hank Aguirre trying to get to work quickly out in that Tigers bullpen. Erlander looks in. 3-0 pitch, there's a called strike. Fastball misses inside, ball four. So now the bases are loaded, there's nobody out. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury. Ellsbury has walked and hit an RBI double. Fastball misses down low, and I'm kind of of the belief this is probably going to be Verlander's last batter regardless. And I don't start doing roster stuff 
taking control of any of that stuff until the late inning, until the seventh. So Verlander will stay in as long as the game decides to keep him in here. But that wire got up and throwing tells me that they are probably on their way towards getting Verlander out of here. Two old pitch in there for a called strike. Verlander deals. Fastball at the knees. Now he's back to two and two. Verlander looks in. 2-2 pitch, swung on a miss, strike three. He gasses Ellsbury for the first out. A desperately needed one for Verlander, his third strikeout of the game. So now, with Reggie Smith due to step up, you're Verlander, you're hoping for the double play to get you through this. Smith is 0 for 2. Fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Smith has struck out and popped out today. Did have a home run in the game one. Tigers victory. 0-1 pitch, breaking ball. Smith pulls it. Diving stop, McCall it to short for one. Travels turn to first, not in time. Smith beats it out. Terrific play by McCall it. But a run does come home. It's 6-3 Boston. That was a risky play there by McAuliffe to try to go for the out at second. Good throw there to Trammell. Trammell had a good return throw to Norm Catch, but Smith gets down the line fairly well and was able to beat it out. So now it's 6-3 Boston. And Verlander, and this one is surprising me, that they're going to let Verlander stay in with the lefty Aguirre warming up to face Ted Williams. Slider misses away. Williams is all for one. He's also walked and scored. This might be trying to put the rookie through the meat grinder a little bit in this one and see how he handles it. Slider misses away. It's two and one. Mookie Betts waits on deck. Verlander, oh, that's a high, that's a generous strike. Letter high strike against Ted Williams. You don't see that too much. Two and two the count. Breaking ball. Williams gets a piece. Two two offering coming from Verlander. Down in the dirt, block nicely. Runner will take second, though. Kettleton throws, somewhat ill-advised there. Runner at third doesn't try anything, but Smith takes second, so that eliminates the force. Three and two the count as Verlander works to Williams. Way off the plate for ball four, and the bases will be loaded once again. And they're still going to leave him in there. Against the righty, here's Verlander's going to work against Betts. Betts a two-run shot back in the first. Questionable decisions here in letting Verlander continue in this one. But he did get Williams, and now they're going to try to get him past Betts. Playing with a bit of fire here. 1-1 one, one offering. That's a good fastball. We'll call the ball. 2-1 pitch. Betts. Ground ball. Diving stop by Trammell. The second for the force. And now in Trammell saves at least one run, possibly two. And gets the Tigers out of the inning without any further damage. Beautiful play by Trammell. A pair of fine defensive plays. Give Verlander a bit of support, but Boston still strikes for more. We head to the top of the fifth. It's 6-3 Red Sox. Off the Detroit, the 
Allen Tremel. Cy Young will work to Allen Tremel. Tremel has done it in the field and with the bat so far in this series. Fouls this one off. Oh, one pitch from Young. For a ball grounded to second right at Bobby Door. Throws the first, there's one away. Now back, number six. So that'll bring up K line. K line is one for two. He's singled back in the third. His average currently sits at an even 300. First pitch fastball inside. One zero offering from Young. Fastball. Oh my goodness. That's an Angel Hernandez level horrible call there. That was clearly a strike. Young gets squeezed two and zero. It's that fastball at the top of the zone. It's two and one. Curveball. K line clearly not looking breaking ball there. Watches it fall into the zone. Two and two. And that one brings them up. So a very similar pitch to the one that was called a ball earlier, and perhaps that kind of sucker K line in. Fifth strikeout for Young. There's two away. Here's Norm Cash. Cash is 0 for 1 with a walk. Fastball in for a called strike. Breaking ball away is called foul, and the count goes to 0-2. Our good friend Tex Ags tunes in. How are you there, Tex? Tex listening while separating 1973 Strat cards. There you go. Man, I remember separating status pro cards. Back in the day, Cash hammers it back to the mound, but right to Young, who snags it, throws the first. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Cy Young, who desperately needed that. So we have reached the midway point here in Boston, a game that's gone at a little bit slower pace than what has really been a lot of pitching-focused games here in year three uh, broadcasts Reading to this point. But this one, the first baseman, neither pitcher has thrown particularly well for this Barrett. point. And even when they've retired batters, they've run some deep counts. Justin Verlander is shockingly starting the fifth against Joe Harris. Harris homered earlier on. Verlander is at 90 pitches. And Tigers electing to kind of give the rookie an opportunity to see how he handles his first real bit of adversity in his career. Verlander's been very solid at this point. Came in with an ERA, just a touch over three in his first five starts. This is the first start where he's really been off. And against one of the league's top teams in the Red Sox, they're kind of letting them sink or swim here and see how it goes. Here's Jimmy Collins. Collins is one for two. White Sox 18 and 10, Indians 17 and 10. The Tigers three games back, 14 and 12. The Twins four games back at an even 14 and 14. And the Royals, who still can't hit, once again, bring up the rear in the division. Fastball misses up high. Talk before the season, the Cleveland Indians, who have won the AL Central in each of the first two years. And both years, they were miserable in the first half of the season and had to come on late. And last year, they were able to come back as the benefit of injuries to the Twins that Leaded them significantly in the second half of the year as Verlander picks up his fourth strikeout there. Bobby Doerr will step in. 
but I thought the Tigers would improve this year. And I felt like with a couple of teams now who can hang a bit with the Indians, they would not be able to afford another slow start. So in addition to the Twins, and the Tigers, you know, the Twins had been there last year, led that division for a lot of the year. The Tigers have improved, but it's the White Sox who have emerged as the top team in the division to this point. One and two the count as Burlander works the door. Slider away, it's two and two. That was the hundredth pitch from Burlander. Two slider misses down low. Doby Moore waits in the on deck circle. Fastball at the knee is fouled off. Erlander looking to probably wrap up his day with his first one, two, three inning. Instead, it's a curveball that lets Door on base for the walk. I believe that is walk number five for Verland. Here's Dolby Moore. Moore is two for two with a pair of doubles. They are really letting Verlander go here. Six runs, not ten. I understand that. But he's Clearly is off his game. Moore puts this one past Cash at first base. It's the third hit of the game for Dolby Moore. And now the Sox have first and second here in the bottom of the fifth. Good piece of hitting from Dolby Moore. That's a ball that Cash probably needs to be able to make a better play on. And that will end Justin Verlander's day. So the lefty Hank Aguirre will come in for him. Aguirre 1-1, one one, a 5.40 earned run average in 15 innings over 11 games to this point. And now Aguirre will be tasked with keeping this a 6-3 game. We're going to check out. Actually, we'll wait until those runners can still be attributable to Verlander. So Varitek moves over to the right side. Fastball from Aguirre is a call and strike. It's 0-1. You can see the Cubs over the Pirates. Texas Cubs leading the current best team in the National League. one nothing. D-back still up on the White Sox. And American League batting leader Eddie Collins. Eddie Collins batted 400 here in late April. Nice screwball there from McGuire. It's 1-2. Fastball there, swung on and missed. Down goes Varitek, and that ends the fifth. So Aguirre comes in in relief of Verlander, keeps the Red Sox off the board. That'll close the book on Verlander. Words of Bob Uecker in Major League, thank God. <laughs> we head to the top of the sixth here at Fenway. It's 6-3 Red Sox. Jim Northrup will step in against Young to lead off the sixth. It looks like Sa Young may finally have settled in a little bit. Take a quick look here at the final line score for Justin Verlander. It's not a nice one. Four and two-thirds, nine hits, six runs, six walks, four strikeouts. Again, Verlander had only walked three batters in his first five starts of the season, and thus his FSBL career is Verlander is a rookie. So Verlander, twice as many walks today as he had in his first five appearances. Number seven. Just not on his game. That'll happen with rookies, even rookies as talented as Verlander from time to time. This Cy Young working the Northrop gets a fastball at the top of the zone for strike one. Young winds that arm up and delivers. Northrop fouls it off, it's 0-2. Breaking ball there. Northrop takes it. Down around his ankles. 
One two pitch. That one's in there. Strike three called. Young fans Northrop. Six strikeout for Cy Young. This one out here in the top of the six. Number 28. You see the sequence from Young working him high, goes low, and then comes back high again. Good pitching there from Cy Young. Here's Curtis Granderson. Granderson's one for two. That's ball misses down and away. Granderson, double and a run score. <laughs> Is he ever going to be an Astro? Well, only if he gets traded. Traded or as a free agent. Spitball misses down low. It's 2-0. Oh. Yeah, like I'm not, I don't move. I'm not going to manually move guys through all the teams you know, that they, that they played for. It's a player is assigned to one team for the project. Um, and that's the team that he's going to be with unless he leaves via free agency or is traded. Forget it. Tracking everybody moving to their franchises and stuff like that would just be far too tedious at that. Fastball there in Young. Bans Granderson for strikeout number seven, his second strikeout of the inning. As Cy Young seems to have gotten himself his ship righted a bit. Nice to see Robin Yount having a good season. Yount has been one of the league's big underperformers through the first two years. Here's Mickey Tettleton. Tettleton 0 for 2. Tries to hold his swing, but they call it a strike anyway. Ball misses down and away. That pitch hit hard to second, but nice play there by Bobby Dore. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Cy Young. So the Red Sox will come up in the bottom of the sixth, leading it 6-3. Ellsbury Smith and Ted Williams do up. Anchor Dwyer will stay in. Lefty loaded first top third of this uh, Red Sox door. That's all the Ellsbury misses down and away. Mike Henneman and Hookstoss both throwing in the Tigers' bullpen. Your major league wins leader at this point, Steve Bedrosian. Of the Atlanta Braves, who has vultured six wins out of the bullpen. Now back to For Atlanta to this point, Atlanta yeah. playing a lot of nip and tuck close games late, and Ben Rosen has been the beneficiary of that. So Ellsbury grounds out. Here's Reggie Smith. Smith is 0 for 3. Line shot in the center. There's a base hit. Yes, the Mets did trade Dykstra. I mean, listen, I mean, I, 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 you know, I've been a Mets fan all my life. I certainly liked Lenny from those mid-80s teams. Not into the psychopath he's become since retiring. But, uh, but yeah, but I mean, Dykstra is not Verlander. But, I mean, you know, it could always happen. I think it's more likely that Verlander would leave as a free agent than that he would get traded. Here's the count 1 and 0 to Ted Williams. Fastball misses down low. It's 2 and 0. Williams trying to keep that OPS over 1000. There's a rip but foul. Wire deals. Williams lines it. That's going to be extra bases for Ted Williams. One hopper off the wall down the right field corner. Smith's going to come around third. There's going to be a relay throw to the plate. It's a good one, and Smith is going to be gunned down. So Smith is thrown out at the plate. Terrific throw relay from K-Line. I think that was K-Line. Was K-Line the agent?
Reggie Smith wasn't even in the picture when that one reached home. That was an over-aggressive send at third. So here's Mookie Betts. Betts a two-run homer. Back in the first. Again, Betts has hit in the two-hole for the Red Sox for each of the first two seasons of the FSBL. They've moved him into the cleanup slot this season. His average has suffered. He now has nine home runs. So the Red Sox have had a little bit of an adventure on the bases in this game. They've had two runners caught stealing. They had a runner thrown out on a nice play by Granderson off the monster. Then they had, now they've had Smith caught down at the plate. There's a shot down the right field line. That's going to be a base hit. Throw off line. Betts takes second there. That was a, a good throw there. Might have had, had a shot at having Betts at second, but it's an RBI double from Mookie as Ted Williams comes around to score. And it's 7-3 Boston. Warm cash laid out for that ball, but was not able to come up with it. Now here's Joe Harris. Foul that one off. Harris two for three, a single, a homer. His first two hits of the series. He went over four yesterday. Screwball misses away. Another screwball. A legitimate screwball. Swung on and missed by Harris. It's one and two. Ground ball to short. Trammel charges. Throws on to first. And the side is retired. But the Sox add another one. We will head to the seventh. It is 7-3 Boston. Tigers will send the call at Horton and Polanco up here to start the seventh inning. And Cy Young at 97 pitches is going to get to start the seventh. Here's Dick McAuliffe. He's one for two. Breaking ball, ground ball, door dives, knocks it down. He's going to try to stay with it to get McAuliffe, and he's unable to. McAuliffe is on with an infield base hit. Second hit of the game for Dick McAuliffe. Here's Willie Horton. Horton is 0 for 1. Red Sox, have, we've not seen anybody up in their bullpen, although I imagine that's going to change soon. Horton fouls off the first pitch basket. looks in and delivers Horton ground ball through the hole to the right side McAuliffe is going to hold it second as Betts comes up throwing but the Tigers have their first two men on here in the top of the seventh Number 17. so the order rolls over Placido Polanco will step in good piece of hitting there from Willie Horton Breaking ball to Young. And you know what? Now that it's the seventh. Oh, they've just started warming them up. All right. Bergmeier and Uihara are, are warming up for the for the Sox. Okay. Make sure they had somebody warming up at this point. Polanco is two for three. A single, a double, a pair of runs. Cy Young, a rough start. Settled down a bit, but now he's in trouble here in the seventh inning. This is up high. It's 2-0. Oh. Young gets the sign from Varitek. And delivers. Fastball in for a called strike. There you see Bergmeier and Uehara both throwing. Either up on the mound yet. They still need a little bit of time. Oh, 
2-1, Polanco lines it to right. Coming on, Betts dives and makes the play. Oh, that's a heck of a play by Mookie Betts. The runner will tag and go to third, but Betts with a fantastic grab on a low sinking lineup. Beautifully done by Mookie Betts. So now here's Alan Trammell. Trammell is one for three. Third ball misses down and in. Padres over the Brewers, 6-3. Prince Fielder has hit his fourth home run for the Brewers. Rockies defeat the Reds in Cincinnati, 4-2. Dave Henderson acquired in the offseason. From these Red Sox, it hit his seventh home run of the year. For the Rockies, Cubs still lead the Pirates 1-0 in the seventh. Babe Adams and Claude Pesso in a good pitching matchup there. Duo pitch, foul back. Cy Young at 107 pitches. That's oh, ooh, he gets the low away call there. It's two and two. Not sure Trammell loved that one. Tigers bench certainly didn't. Young from the set. Delivers. Best ball up and in, and the count goes full. K-line is on deck. Three-two offering coming from Young to Trump. High fly ball foul. Right now, the hottest bat in this Tigers lineup. There's another 3 2 pitch. Breaking ball, grounded to second. Door flips to Moore. On to first. 4 6 3 double play. Young gets out of the inning. And the Tigers may have just seen their last good chance go by the wayside. Seventh inning stretch time here at Fenway. It's 7 3 Red Sox. So Aguirre will stay in for now. That seems questionable. Let's see. Do they have anybody who's ready in the bullpen? They do. Yeah, that, Aguirre I don't think is throwing well enough to warrant leaving him in there at this point. Um, let me see. Who are we going to use? Jimmy. Oh, Henneman's worked Collins. plenty. We don't want Henneman. You know what? Henneman should actually probably sit out. We're gonna, we're gonna sit Henneman down and warm up Al Benton. And we're gonna put Hooks Dawson in this game. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. This will be Dawson's sixth now, appearance of the year. He's one and one, a four point five oh turned run average. Collins is one for three. Ball up and in. The Padres are playing 500 ball, which kind of shocks me. Ground ball to short. Trammell has it. Throw to first. There's one away. Cardinals got slow out of the gate, but now they are three games over 500 as they try to chase down the Pirates. In steps Bobby Doerr. This is up and in. That one is fouled off. Twins have taken the 6 3 lead on the Astros in the seventh. Johnny Edwards and RBI for the Astros in that one. Line drive, short hop, played nicely by McAuliffe. Throws the first, there's two away. 
Royals still lead the Rangers 1-0 in Kansas City. Now batting, number 22. Didn't tell us the pitching matchup there. Usually good. A is up on the Phillies 1-0 in Oakland. Robin Roberts and Eddie Plank, the pitching matchup there as Dolby Moore steps in. Angels all over the Expos, 11-2. Mike Napoli, his fifth home run of the year for California. Padres, as we mentioned, 6-3 over the Brewers in the seventh. Soft liner to first. York has it and retires the side. So nice job by Hooks Doss out of the Tigers' bullpen. We'll head to the top of the eighth here at Fenway. It's 7-3 Red Sox. K-Line, Cash, and Northrop do up for Detroit. It wants to leave Young in. I'll give Young a base runner then. At 111 pitches. Fastball at the knee. Is it strike one? Base runner of any kind, and Young's going to get yanked. K-Line fouls that one off. It's 0-2. Ball misses down low. Living a little bit dangerously here. Young in a world of trouble in the seventh. But he did get the big double play ball. And ball here. Misses outside. It's two and two. I fly ball on the right. Betts comes on. He'll get there. Puts it away for out number one. That'll bring up Norm Cash. Cash is 0 for 2 with a walk. He's 0 for 6 in the series. Fastball misses up and in. It's 1 and up. Tom Bergmeyer and Jack Wilson. Coach Uihara has sat down for Boston. Wilson has taken his place. High fly ball deep to right field. That one's going back. That's going to get out of here. Home run Detroit. Norm Cash, his fourth of the season. Reaches the seats in right here at Fenway. And Cy Young looks like a man who knows that is the end of his day. So they gave it to him. And Norm Cash gave him something to remember him by. So cash goes yard. The Tigers cut the deficit to 7-4. And now the Red Sox bullpen will try to bring this one home. I didn't even have to do it. They'll do it themselves. Which I like. So a gritty performance from Young, who clearly did not have his best stuff today. He let up three runs early, but ends up pitching into the eight. And now... Koji Uihara, so Uihara was warm already. Uihara is going to come in. 1-1 one one at 2.61 earned run effort so far this season. He has yet to allow a hit to a right-handed batter. This will be his ninth appearance of the year. Of course, Jim Northrup is a left-handed batter who steps the in batter. to face him first. Number seven. Hutter misses inside. It's 1-0. Northrup is 0-2 with the sacrifice flat. Ball there is fouled off. Willie Mays is currently in triple crown position in the National League. Obviously, we're not even a full month into the season, but still, something worth watching. Fast ball at the knees. It's one and two. Splitter there. Fouled off. Uihara winds and fires. Swung on and missed. Down goes Northrop. And there's two away here in the top of the eighth. Now batting. Number 28. 
Northrop flies off that one, swings and misses. Here's Curtis Granderson. Granderson is one for three with a double. They punch him there on the fastball strike. They say that he went around. It's strike one. So far to this point, is looking at the stolen base leaders. Neither the National League or American leaders of the first two years, Ricky Henderson and Jose Reyes, are even in the top five in their respective leagues at this point. Again, it is still only April. One and one to count. Whether there is fouled off. Uehara ahead of Granderson here. Two outs in the top of the eighth. 7-4 Boston. Fly ball to center. That will stay well in the yard. Ellsbury under it. Puts it away and the side is retired. So Uehara does a nice job in relief of Cy Young. Norm Cash goes yard for his fourth of the season to get the Tigers an inch closer. We head to the bottom of the eighth and it's still Red Sox 7, Tigers 4. Here's Jason Baratek. Baratek is old for two with a walk. Hooks Doss only needed seven pitches last inning, so he'll stay on for another inning of work. Screw ball to him. This is down low. Baratek pops it up on the infield. Cash is underneath it, puts it away for out number one. Now batting, number two. That'll bring up Jacoby Ellsbury. Ellsbury is one for three. He has walked, double, driven in a run. At the knees for strike one. Delivered. Sinker misses the wet. One and one to count. Cross delivers. Ellsbury pops it up. The call up goes out into the outfield. It's a long run, but the call up gets there. Feels like one of the outfielders probably should have reeled that one in. But McAuliffe makes the play. There's two down. Smith. Here's Reggie Smith. Smith is one for four, a single and an RBI. Fastball misses up and in. Cross with the deep side. 1-0 pitch to Smith. This is a way. It's 2-0. And, oh. Here's the pitch. Smith yanks it back. Two and one the count. Ball on the corner, it's two and two. That pitch was borderline high and borderline outside. Doss gets the benefit of both. Two two pitch. Chopper up the middle, fielded by Trammel, throw to first, dug out on the low throw. Nice play there by Catch, and the side is retired. So the Tigers will come up with their last opportunity here at Fenway. Edelton, McAuliffe, and Horton do up. We'll probably see a pinch hitter somewhere in that mix. It's 7-4 Red Sox. And Jonathan Papelbon will come on to try to close it out. Papelbon has struggled. He's already blown two saves and nine opportunities. A 6.48 earned run average in nine appearances. Again, small sample size to be sure. We'll start off facing Mickey Tennell. Roberto... 
Pitch fastball in for a call and strike. Oh, one off for a nice splitter there from Papelbon, who's ahead of Pendleton 0 2. Baratek sets up inside. Slider there, Pendleton gets a piece. This is the aforementioned Lenny Dykstra, who has Zags it up. Dykstra it's, it's in an 0 for 22 shot. Got a pair of hits in their last game against the Astros. Papelbon blows away Tettleton with the strikeout for out number one here in the top of the night. Here's Dick McAuliffe. McAuliffe is 2 for 3. He's got a pair of singles, so we're going to let McAuliffe hit since he has two hits on the day. Despite his paltry season. Fastball off the plate, it's one and up. As a fastball fouled off. One and one, the count. Shot, fouled the other way down the third baseline, and it's one and two. Crowd here at Boston, looking for another K from Papelbon. They're on their feet. One-two pitch. McCullough fights it off. Papelbon looks in again. Low pitch, chopped out to first. Harris will take it himself, and the Tigers are down in their final out. Up next to the Tigers, the left Horton. Scheduled to build Willie Horton. Horton one for two. He's been terrible to this point of the season, though. I don't know if the Tigers really have much on their bench. Yeah, Warner McCoskey is rated well. McCoskey hasn't really had a hit yet, but Horton hasn't really done much, even though he has an infield hit today. Warner McCoskey will get the pinch hit corner, though. And McCoskey has had limited action to this point. They're going to bring him in for a pinch hit opportunity here. As the Tigers final out against Papelbon. Fastball misses down low. Vaughn looks in, gets the sign from Baratek. One zero pitch. Fastball misses down low. It's two and zero. Oh. Two zero oh pitch. Ground ball to second. Door has it. Throw to first. Ball game is over. And the Red Sox, even the series at a game apiece, they have taken game two of this three game set. Again, a gritty effort from Cy Young, who was not perfect by any stretch, but kept the Tigers off the board after the third, pitched into the eighth. The rookie Justin Verlander did not have. As the sim did not have similar luck for the Tigers. He just couldn't get himself on track in this one. And that, that'll happen sometimes in your career, even when you're as talented as Perlander is. He'll be fine. He's been terrific in his first five starts this season. There you see Mookie Betts with a great play out and right. And there's your final out. Young with the win, Perlander with the loss, Applebaum with the save. Seven runs, 12 hits, no errors for Boston. Four runs, nine hits, no errors for the Tigers. Verlander, four and two-thirds, nine hits, four strikeouts, six walks. Again, Verlander, I don't know why it's showing someone else's picture there instead of Verlander, but whatever. Verlander, uh, six walks. He had only walked three batters in his first five starts of the season. So again, Verlander just did not have his stuff today for Detroit. 
Cy Young grinded his way through seven and a third. Nine hits, seven strikeouts. He did walk two, allowed four runs. But in the end, gets the win, Mookie Betts. Two for three, a homer, a double, a pair of RBIs, and a terrific play out in right. Gets the nod for player of the game honors. So that will do it here from Fenway. I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in for this late Easter evening broadcast. I hope you all enjoyed the day with your families, whatever you ended up doing. I will have a the National League Game of the Week probably at some point tomorrow. The Marlins and the Braves, Sandy Alcantara and Greg Maddox will be the pitching matchup in that one. Heck, Dags, Bernard Strom, Steve Kate, Nathaniel Lentz, and Dwayne Marks were all in the house. Greatly appreciate you gentlemen checking in. Be sure to enjoy the rest of your day or night whenever you are listening to this. Most importantly, be good to each other. And we will talk soon. The Red Sox take down the Tigers 7-4 at Fenway.